My name is Ashna Patel, and today I'm going to be breaking down my science fair project. Over the past few years, a common misconception that I've noticed is that your research has to fit a certain template in order to be successful. Back in freshman year, I followed this concept exactly. I ended up choosing a microbiology project far beyond my understanding at the time, thinking that if I chose the most complicated sounding bacteria and obscure disease, I could somehow trick my judges into thinking I was far smarter than I was. Instead of finding the revolutionary results I hoped for, I spent hours confused about even the basics of growing bacteria. Now, don't get me wrong. Learning new things that are challenging is inherently good. But because I wasn't doing it for the right reasons, and I wasn't actually interested in what I was researching, I ended up biting off far more than I could chew. Moving into 10th grade, I didn't want to do science fair at all. I was discouraged by the year before and didn't think I could come up with a project that was smart enough. In fact, I wasn't even planning on doing science fair until a Model United Nations conference that November. The topic of the MUN conference was improving living conditions in refugee camps. I remember being really surprised that countries known for being arid were facing rains and flooding due to changing climate patterns. Because their clothing and shelters were made from cotton and canvas, refugees in these regions were unable to stay dry, which was harmful to both their health and quality of life. When I went back home and started doing a bit more research, I tried looking up ways that people have already found in order to make materials more water resistant. However, a lot of the existing options were either artificial silicon-based sprays or they were natural waxes that used food resources, which seems quite counterintuitive for already undernourished refugee populations. After I had come up with the general topic area for my project, I did a ton of background research, reading everything from newspapers and magazine articles to homemade food and cosmetic recipes. I remember watching dozens of YouTube videos and skimming through blogs to get inspiration for one, what ingredients to use, and two, how to easily process them. Then I had to come up with a way to test my substances. In the industry, a lot of companies use the hydrostatic head test to determine water resistance. However, traditional equipment for the HH test is very expensive. Instead, I designed my own version of the test using materials commonly found in fish tanks, like an aquarium pump to build pressure, and an air switch to control the flow of the liquid. I also used PVC piping and old Jenga blocks to build the frame of my contraption. Because I wasn't sure how effective my HH method would be, I also measured the average contact angle of a bead of water on each of the experimental groups as a secondary way to also obtain results. From there came the really fun part of my project, where I basically spent winter break tearing apart my mom's kitchen, making a bunch of waxes and oils and testing their effectiveness. After a ton of trial and error, I went through the notebook where I'd written down all of my results. Ultimately, I decided on one substance for each of my three target regions. For South and Central America, I used coconut oil, chia seed gel, and carnauba wax. For Central Asia, I used flaxseed gel and walnut oil. And for Asia Pacific, I used rice bran oil and palm oil. I used mainly the shells and peels of the ingredients to avoid using any of the edible or nutritional parts that would be more valuable as food for refugees. I also experimented with easy ways to extract needed oils or gels, for instance, by reusing old stockings in the hopes that my methods could be replicated. From there, I designed my experimental setup, this time using precise measurements and a control group before then collecting all my data and analyzing it. The results revealed that using the created substances for all three regions increased the HH values for both cotton and canvas. Overall, this project certainly wasn't as sophisticated as my freshman year microbiology research. However, because I really let myself be creative with it and I was genuinely interested in what I was doing, it ended up being a lot more rewarding. It showed me that overall, just allowing yourself to have the freedom to follow your thoughts, ideas, and questions can be extremely valuable, even past just a science fair project. Thank you for listening.